and loving sairams again to all of you. With Swami's blessings and my humble, humble prostrations and salutations at Swami's lotus feet, indebted is just a small word, Swami. He has helped us entirely through this retreat. Moving mountains, you're here in the mountains, but many mountains have been moved and still in motion and hoping that Swami will help us move the rest of the mountains and clear our path so that this retreat is going to be a beautiful, beautiful offering at Swami's divine lotus feet. So welcome again and thank you all for registering. We are very, very happy again, Swami's blessings again, that we have about 430 devotees registered through this event. Yes, yeah, so please give yourself a round of applause because you have come here to participate and come together in unity. That's the most important part that Swami always talks about. Oneness, right? Find the oneness in, in, this, in this vast ocean of people who are there, finding that community of Sai. That's been very important for us. So why retreat, right? We can find it in our own communities. We don't have to get together and mass like this and come together, right? So retreats offer us a platform where not only can we meet together, right, as one family, but also exchange different ideas, invigorate and re reinstate our love, right? And attach to that, that life form that is within us, that is our dear side. We not only learn from each other, connect, I mean, we've all had Zoom connections, right? This whole retreat planning has been based on Zoom. And so it's been uh, from Orlando to Raleigh, from Atlanta to St. Thomas, uh, from different states, all across our region, we've made those connections. But this brings the fruition here, when people come together and then meet one another in person, that makes it all happen. So what I want to tell people is that from this retreat, what is our perspective? What should each devotee seek? Swami has a message for each and every one of us, believe it or not. So keep in tune with that Swami. With us, he's here, and he's in within all of you. So channel and connect to that frequency of Swami so that you will receive that divine message that you can take home and practice. This is all about transformation. Even a small step in this direction is what this is. So regard this retreat as one which will transform you or take it along on that path of transformation for you. We've all looked at various aspects of this retreat to make everyone comfortable and to meet everyone's needs as well. But there will be some, some reasons for Swami to test us, right? <laughs> and so uh, please, you are Swami's voice. Please come and reach out to us and let us know how we can improve ourselves. Life is all about that, about doing better and better every time. So I have very little to say because I want to uh, have the focus mainly on our national president. And we're very honored to have our SSSGC national president here. As you know, this is our first Region 3 SSSGC or Global Council um, retreat this year. And we're very lucky and honored to have Brother Balu. Dr. Bra Balu is very from our region, and we are very lucky to have him as well. So both the zonal chair as well as our national president are from our region. And um, so I would like to welcome Dr. Balu onto the stage and give us. <laughs> as you see, he's very, very popular in every form. <laughs> Sarva Bhuta.
ಶಾಂತರ್ವನಾಮಧರಂ ಶಿವ ಸಚಿತಂದಮದ್ವೈತ ಸತ್ಯ ಶಿವ ಸುಂದರ ಐ ಆಫರ್ ಮೈ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಸ್ಯಾಲುಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ನೇಮ್ಸ್ ಹೀ ಈಸ್ ಸಚ್ಚಿತಾನಂದ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಹೀ ಈಸ್ ದ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಸ್ಪೀಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಲೈಫ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ದರ್ಸ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೆಂಬರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸಾಯಿ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಸಾಯಿರಾಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಎಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ರೀಜನ್ ಸೊ ದೆರ್ ಈಸ್ ನೋ ರೀಸನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಸೊ ಸೊ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಐ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೈ ಆನರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಿವಿಲೇಜ್ ಟು ಶೋ ವೇರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಎಸ್ 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 ಜಿ ಸಿ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಯಾಸ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟರ್ ವಿನಿ ವಾಸ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಸ್ಟಕ್ ಇನ್ ರೂಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಝೂಮ್ಸ್ ಝೂಮ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಝೂಮ್ ಸಿ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಂಟ್ ಎಟ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಮೀಟಿಂಗ್ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಐ ಸಾ ದಟ್ ವೆನ್ ದ ನಗರ್ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಐ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ವಿ ಡಿಡ್ ಎನಿ ನಗರ್ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನ್ ಆನ್ ಝೂಮ್ ಎನಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಂಡ್ ಯಾ ಸೊ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಲೈಕ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ show it like basically for the administrative reasons we have divided usa into different uh, parts so this is uh, the sss gc we have 10 regions in sss gc you can go one by one let me not take too much time because i'm standing between the speaker and all of you so first uh, we have northeast you can go ahead yeah see this is the national council you can see that it is the national team which coordinates with the regional teams and regional teams coordinate with the centers centers are the important you know places where the swami's activity goes on like again hierarchy in the sssgc is more on responsibilities it's not a positional hierarchy let me say that and clarify to all of you the next slide in the northeast these are the you know wonderful instruments of swami serving him then we can go to mid atlantic mid atlantic we have entire team right now they are doing their retreat 650 people are attending that that retreat also so that's where we are <laughs> then comes to region 3 we should not forget there is as uh, you know sister vinny said there is a center in st thomas in atlantic ocean we are the only reason where we have a center in the atlantic so we have we have complete uh, you know uh, uh, team and they did a wonderful work wonderful effort to bring all of you here just give them a applause chill <laughs> then reason 4 that is in the mid central we have again wonderful team working on the you know region 4 then we can go to region 5 we have a we had a retreat also in indianapolis in last october so again there is a complete team serving swami in the region 5 then comes to pacific north we have a team and you know we, this is going on again see expansion is swami's life isn't it it started with small little parthi you know where it is expanded sai is all over the world so that is swami is always like that we have to be just his instruments to do his work so next one in the coming to the california region we have combined two seven and eight together we call it california along with hawaii so we have a complete uh, team there we had a re recently a regional retreat with shri vedanarayan coming and also we had a you know satya sai vratham done at uh, you know uh, southern california and also he spoke at tustin sai center then region 9 which is in uh, arizona phoenix area we had a wonderful birthday celebrations actually one of the brothers srijit is here from that region came to region 3 actually so the, everything is coming together and a lot of energy always then region 10 is texas south central we have a complete a team and actually dallas center started with four people today it is 100 and odd devotees in that center that that's the way swami thing goes on then coming to where we are 
See, like we have Parthi pilgrimage is coming. One eight. 189 devotees have signed up for that. Then there is a, a center leadership conference which is coming. People from all over the world, from SSS GC are coming and joining there. 1,200 delegates are signed up to Parthi for the, you know, uh, like uh, Guru Purnima time. And also YA program is going to happen. With that, I offer all these flowers. Each center is a flower at his lotus feet. I offer all of them at Swami's lotus feet, Sri Puttaparthi Nilayudu Kapadu Numimmu Yapudu Karuna Karudai Che Patti Patti Nilachunu Ye Patti Nilavakunda Ye Lunumimmun This is what Swami said. He said this Puttaparthi Nilayudu. He always called himself a lord of, sweet lord of Puttaparthi. He'll always hold you. He'll never leave you. Let's hold on to him. Let's hold on to Swami. Jai Sai Ram. Um, Sai Ram, everybody, my most humble pranams at the lotus feet of our beloved Lord. Uh, it's my honor and privilege to introduce the speaker for today, Dr. Ame. Dr. Ame Deshpande has been um, uh, an integral part of both uh, the music group as well as uh, the uh, education wing in the uh, Prashanti Nilayam. I actually um, want to take up, want to break his life into three different parts, like the man, the myth, and the legend. <laughs> yeah, for the man, I will introduce, I'll, I'll introduce him first, yeah. Dr. Bhav or Dr. Amit Ami Deshpande hails from Maharashtra. He was a student of the Sri Satya Sai Primary School, Prashanti Nilayam, from 1990 to 1993. He acquired his bachelor's degree in commerce from the Bangalore University. He pursued chartered accountancy. He has worked briefly with Hewlett Packard, and during this time, he was also a member of the Brindavan Bhajan Group and also the Brindavan uh, Seva Dal. And uh, in 2003, he enrolled for the MBA program in finance at the Sri Satisai Institute of Higher Learning. Thereafter, when, based on his conversation with Swami, he also registered for the MPhil program. In 2006, he was also awarded the gold medal in, uh, for distinction in MPhil. He um, completed his doctorate or doctoral studies in 2016 in the areas of corporate strategy. During this period, he also taught students for the MBA program, and he's also taught about financial strategy, management control systems, and so on. I'm, I'm reminded of a small episode uh, back then when Swami used to pull up my mark sheet in front of everybody. I'm reminded like how, how, how honored and great he is, because I was really like this in studies, and Dr. Amay is like this. Different story. And uh, now about the myth, I've heard he eats like bhajans for breakfast, so we have to see how, how far that is true. Yeah, and the legend, and it is not very easy for um, someone to be part of the Parthi music group. I've been a part of the Parthi music group for a while. I've struggled it out because I was weak at studies and my warden sir would never allow me to get into that realm because he said first you improve there. So I had to beg, borrow, steal you know, and come to a little bit level. So I know how difficult it is to sit in front of Swami every day and you know, and be part of the budging group. So that is, it's extremely legendary to be part of that group. Yeah. So um, I welcome you like Dr. Tommy. Sai Shwaraya Vidmahe 
ಸತ್ಯದೇವಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ತನ್ನ ಸರ್ವ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಇನ್ವೋಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೆನಿಡಿಕ್ಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ರಿವಿಯರ್ಡ್ ಎಲ್ಡರ್ಸ್ ಡಿಯರ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ವಾಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲವಿಂಗ್ ಸಾಯಿರಾಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಟೇಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಟು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಈಚ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ವನ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ಮೀ ಅ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ರೀಜನಲ್ ರಿಟ್ರೀಟ್ ಈವನ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ ಶ್ರೀವತ್ಸ ವಾಸ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಮೀ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ರಿಮೈಂಡೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಚಿನ್ನ ಕಥಾ ಅ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ದಟ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವುಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನ್ ರೇಟ್ but even before that i must acknowledge it is so wonderful to see so many of my brothers brother uday girish who was my my own batchmate and so many of my elders brother ravi mariwala and of course aunty geeta whom we respect so much so wonderful to be amongst all of you such loving souls so coming back you know to this chinna katha this was one of those chinna kathas that swami would pretty much not tell in public he would always tell this you know to to all the students uh, in trai or in sai shruti so the chinna katha goes like this several hundred years ago there was a very famous sculptor and he used to create absolutely mesmerizing statues of the lord different you know statues where there is venkateshwara lord krishna and absolutely bewitching used to be his his art and people from all over the region would come and place orders and he would you know create these beautiful statues of the lord and those would be installed in their respective villages in their homes so on so forth now it so happened that the sculptor got one of the most uh, cherished you know orders and that was from the king of that particular region the king himself placed an order for a beautiful krishna statue and so the sculptor created the krishna statue and it was absolutely mesmerizing almost life like after having completed that uh, statue now it had to be transported to the kingdom you know the the royal palace and this sculptor his means or his mode of transport to actually carry all of the the idols used to be a donkey his personal donkey so he had taken this statue of the lord he placed it on the donkey's back and the donkey started walking towards the capital city where the royal palace is and now the donkey starts to move through the capital city and you know it's buzzing it's the downtown it's supposed to be the cbd the central business district right and for the first time the donkey is seeing so much activity you know bazaars and all the business uh, tycoons over there and the moment you know the the statue of the lord enters into the marketplace people seeing the statue they are absolutely mesmerized they are bewitched by the beauty of it so all of them come forward and start throwing you know flowers on you know and now the donkey thinks that all of these flowers are for itself <laughs> so the donkey suddenly starts thinking swami explains that the donkey starts to think that ah finally my day has arrived <laughs> all of these years of hard work have finally found fruition because people have finally understood what a great person i am okay and as the donkey is moving through flowers are being thrown and you know kumkum is being thrown and chandan has been you know kind of uh, felicitated the lord is being felicitated and the donkey is feeling so good about himself and finally the donkey actually comes in front of the palace and the king himself comes out to receive okay and the donkey says oh my god this is too much i mean please don't embarrass me right and you know the entire royal family 
does sashtang pranam you know kind of the full fledged pranam in front of the donkey and the donkey says it's okay it's okay you know not so much now this is only there's only so much that i can take and so saying you know the statue of the lord is lifted and in great ceremonial you know kind of with kumbhabhishekam that purna kumbham and vedic chants and all the musicians it is carried in to the royal palace and the donkey you know kind of waits over there thinking that there is more to come and the moment the you know the entire retinue has gone in you know the soldiers over there the gate gatekeepers they said hey hey you know they just kick the donkey what what are you doing here and the donkey is like hey it's me <laughs> didn't you see like just a few minutes back and i mean the, you know the donkey is just simply shooed away and now as the donkey starts to make its way back to its master's home there's absolutely nobody bothered about it right and swami says the donkey starts to now thinking you know he starts to think oh how fickle is the mind of man okay how fickle minded just a few minutes back i was the sinosure of everyone's eye i was the apple of everybody's eye and it is trying to say hey it's me that donkey you know and so you know it is absolutely it is shocked with the behavior of man and so he it goes back to its master and it says master what is this how do you how do you explain this you know just half an hour back i was like the most venerated everybody was doing pranams i was telling them not to do and still they were doing and just half an hour later i am a nobody and then the master says you donkey <laughs> you know you are a donkey only those people were not doing pranams to you those people were doing pranams to the lord who was sitting on your back okay so this is the story we all understood where swami starts from here is you are all also like that only he would point at you know he would tell all the students okay as long as you are associated with me you will get all the pranams the moment you let me off you let go of me you will know what is your level so when brother was introducing me as the man the myth and the legend i was only thinking i don't want to be the donkey <laughs> the man the myth the legend and the glory is only one okay and that is our sweet lord sitting here so let's not get into <clears throat> so let's not get into all of these other things and just focus this entire retreat on that one power that powers the entire universe including every single breath of ours so i love the story so much because i constantly keep reminding myself i don't want to be the donkey i know as much as all the brothers and sisters over here come and says oh sairam prashanti prashanti bhajan group seva dal etc etc it's nothing but being a donkey right and i'm sure that every sai student over here will definitely uh, kind of resonate with that thought the only thing that adds some value to our cv is our association with swami right well now coming back to uh, <clears throat> what i would like to share with you is if you can just have the ppt and it's very very simple ppt there's nothing spectacular about it but i just thought that it will give us a framework to understand you know what we can possibly do in the next two and a half days so we call ourselves retreat right so there is there is a way that we have been treating ourselves right all of this time and now we come here to retreat ourselves correct we've been treating ourselves in a particular way but we come to a retreat like this to figure out how we can actually retreat ourselves there is something wrong with the way we have been treating or there is something wrong in the way we should be treating ourselves even in the normal world in our day to day life and it is to you know kind of get that course correction you know why we need to do this retreat so how do we intend what what could be a possible way to retreat ourselves and that is what i will present to you mind you whatever i say then this is what i would always tell to students in my class is you will hear a lot of things over here 
from here. Don't take everything. You need not take everything. Everything will not, you will not be agreeable to whatever I say over here. Take what you want, leave what you don't. Fair deal? Is that a fair deal? Right? Take what you want, whatever is useful to you, take it. But having taken it, do contemplate on it. Right? So, in this retreat, I'm sure the next slide will, will kind of... Uh, have, you, have you seen this? This is one of the more famous movies. <laughs> so, we are going to use this framework to understand what we will do, what we could do in the next three days. What is this RRR? Okay? So, this RRR is recharge, reflect, and resolve. I'm sure that each one of you sitting over here have come for one of these three, if not for all of these three. I'm sure that, you know, even as we sit over here and as this talk ends and as Gita Auntie starts to speak, right, what, what does it do? The first R, it recharges us. Just listening to the stories of Swami recharges us. Am I right? And so one of the things that we have definitely come here to do is to recharge our batteries, so to speak. Every time, you know, we go to Prashanti Nilayam, um, or rather when you all come to Prashanti Nilayam, one of the things that we always hear is, um, we have come here to recharge our batteries and we feel recharged now, now that we are here. And you know, while I was leaving Prashanti to come over here, one of the brothers actually told me, brother, go and recharge yourself and come back. <laughs> and I said, you know, in my mind, I said, I'm not sure whether it's going to be recharge or discharge. Okay. <laughs> But, in a sense, to see Swami's glory all over the world is a recharge of its own. You get to know how small and insignificant you are in the world of Swami. Right? When we see devotees like these, when we see the love for Swami's, you know, beating in the hearts of all of you, that is a recharge. See, it's very easy to be in Prashanti Nilayam and focus on Swami. Right? When Swami is, tip, you know, kind of almost literally your boss. He's the one who's paying you, right? Swami is the one who pays us all as Central Trust employees, right? Wherever we see, we see Bhagwan's pictures. Everybody shouting at us also in the name of Swami only. You know, and I feel, uh, uh, many times I feel like <clears throat> in any other place, you know, your boss, you have a pretty tough day at work. You can go to, you know, your altars. You can go to your home, stand in front of Swami and say, Swami, what did I do wrong? You know, Swami, change this person. But what if Swami is the boss who is yelling at you? <laughs> right? What if you are getting your stick from Swami himself? Whom do you go to then? And in fact, this is a, one of the questions that I had asked Chakravarti sir. Because I said, sir, how, how does it feel to have God as your boss and also as your God? Right? Imagine when, when you have God as your boss, okay, and he kind of gives you a little reprimand. Where do you go to? You know, often there's a beautiful story in Ramayana where um, as Rama stands on the banks of, uh, on the shores of the, uh, on the ocean to cross, you know, he keeps his kodanda, he keeps his bow down. And uh, there is a little frog which is stuck under the bow. Okay, so the bow is sitting on top of, uh, of the frog. And the frog has just given up. So there is a legendary story where somebody comes and asks uh, the frog, Hey frog, why are you not praying? Right? Why don't you ask for rescue? He says, when the person who is supposed to rescue me, when he only places his bow on top of me, where am I supposed to go? <laughs> right? So, a, a bit, uh, uh, that is how uh, uh, we feel a little bit in Prashanti. <laughs> when we are yelled at, no? Are Swami is only yelling at us. Okay? So, in a sense, coming over here and seeing you all is like a recharge. Right? And so, I will just share my thoughts on each one of these and see whether some of them resonate with you. What can we do in the next two and a half days? Right? There is an element of recharge. There must be an element of reflect. Right? If we don't have reflection in our spiritual lives, then as Brother Udaygirish said, we have ticked off a bunch of activities from the morning. That's all happens. Right? Satya Sai Seva organization becomes another platform to tick off a bunch of activities. Are we here? Did we, you know, we already have a bunch of activities in our day-to-day -day life. 
Have we come to Prashanti or have we come to Swami to tick off another set of activities? Point to ponder. Right? Are we here to just tick off a bunch of like, okay, some bhajans, some seva, some meditation, some nagar sankirtan, some suprabhatam, or is there something more to it? What is it that I want? Why am I over here? Reflect. Okay, and having done the two, having recharged yourself and having reflected, what should be the end point? There must be a resolve. That while I walk out on Monday morning after this retreat, my life will never be the same again. If it goes back to being the same, what has this, what has this uh, retreat served? You know, as I was mentioning over the last couple of days, it just becomes spiritual entertainment. Correct? Means I could be watching Netflix, or oh, now I will listen to Geeta Aunty. Equally entertaining. Possibly, in the sense, in the sense, this is, you know, I, I satisfy myself by saying that this is good entertainment. At least I'm not wasting my time doing Netflix. That's all it is. You know, often times, uh, the reason why I say this, I say this from my own experience. During the pandemic, about seven or eight of us or ten of us used to be allowed to enter into mandir every day because there were no devotees and we would be singing bhajans morning and evening. Okay, and so it started from in, in March of 2020 and up, up to almost March of 2022, we were just ten of us going and like donkeys we were braying in, in mandir. <laughs> right? And somewhere... It, it, just imagine every single day, morning, evening, morning, evening, morning, evening, morning, evening, it almost became like a chore for us. You know, it became like another activity to be ticked. Hey, you know what? I need to go to Mandir because enough singers are not there, so on and so forth. And at some point of time, one day as I was coming out of Mandir, one of the, you know, one of the brothers, one of uh, my own kind of colleagues who works in our office in the Vidya Vahini Center, he comes and says, Brother, how lucky you are. It's been a year and we have not got a chance to enter into Kulvanthal and you are entering into Kulvanthal every day twice. And that's when it kind of, you know, it, it, was, it was the shock that I needed. You are getting that opportunity. What are you doing with it? Right? So, even as we were singing bhajans and all the devotees around the world and everybody was saying, oh, wonderful bhajan, Sai Ram, you know, fantastic. What was it doing to me? Right? Somebody else was getting recharged. What about me? Was I reflecting on my own bhajan experience? Right? And that was the time when, and I, I shall kind of, you know, even share some more stories about how Swami has made me reflect. Okay? And to take certain resolutions. So let me start with, first of all, recharge. I feel that even as I will share a few experiences of mine, what I would like you to do is to go back into the treasure chests of your own heart okay, and relive the first moment you had with Swami. Let me take you back to 2005, 2004 in fact. And it was a time when, you know, Swami had had a fall in Vrindavan and his hand was fractured and Swami wouldn't come out for darshan and um, there were only nine boys who were allowed to go into Vrindavan okay so just imagine all of us used to wait outside we used to do bhajans every day while nine boys would go inside have breakfast with Swami would have lunch with Swami would have dinner with Swami Okay, and as they would come out, we would then sit with them and say, hey, what did Swami say today? You know, what happened inside, etc, etc. So they were pretty much our broadcasters to what was going on inside. And so you can imagine, right, just nine boys, what an exclusive privilege that they would have had. And uh, it was, June was coming. So typically June 1st is the beginning of the academic year. And so we leave, all of us on 30th or 31st of May, we leave Prashanti, uh, Brindavan to go to Prashanti and start the new academic year. And so these nine boys on 30th of May, they were sitting inside with Swami. Okay, and Swami said, Hey, Iroj already Mupai Aindi, 30th Aindi. Hmm, velendi, velendi, go, all of you go to Prashanti. That is, today is already 30th. Okay, your college starts day after tomorrow. Come on, all of you go. Now just imagine, 
having had like one and a half months with Swami exclusively, having meals with him, you know, having like a chit chat with him every day, you suddenly have to come to reality to know that you're going to go back to hostel, to Prashanti, that hot place <laughs> without Swami. And so all of them like, they were shocked. They said, no Swami, we will come with you. Whenever you come to Prashanti, we will come along with you to Prashanti. And Swami said, no, 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 no. Why? All other boys are going, no? What is so special about you? Okay, why should you alone come with me? All other boys have to go to college. And so it kind of, you know, it struck. And this is a thing that would happen with Swami every time, okay? In Kodaikanal, in wherever you were, in Uti or in, you know, Hadshi or Delhi or wherever you were, Swami would kind of bring you back to reality. Hey, you know what? This is just a chance you've got. Don't take it for granted. Anyway, so all these boys, you know, literally they were like crying. Swami, please, Swami, please, Swami. Okay, and Swami was like, no, what? What do you want? College is starting. You're all students. You're supposed to go and study in college. And they Swami, how can we leave you? Like, how can we leave these beautiful moments that we have had with you? And Swami tells them a beautiful thing. And one of those brothers, he shared it with me. He said, everybody was literally, I mean, it was genuine tears of the pangs of separation. Okay, that we were going to leave Swami. We we're going to go back to that college Right? Who nobody was interested in any way. Right? And so, Swami says, See, each and every day that you have spent with Swami, no, is now there in your heart. And whenever in your life, going forward, whenever you are in a moment of, you know, of, of that um, nadir of your life, when you go down in your life, Open that heart of yours and relive these moments with Swami. These moments have the source of infinite energy. Swami said, these moments with Swami have the source of infinite energy. They can lift you from wherever you are. You see, memories with God no, are not like other memories. And this is where once Swami asked, what is the difference between happiness and bliss? What is the difference between happiness and bliss? Do you know? When you have a beautiful breakfast like we had this morning, poha, one of my favorite food. Or when you have a wonderful pizza. I'm sure pizza is a, you know, a favorite of most of you here. Right? Tell me, do you feel happy? Genuinely, let's not kid ourselves. Any favorite food, you feel happy? Yes, right? We definitely feel happy. When you get a beautiful night sleep, a deep sleep of 6-7 hours, do we feel happy in the morning? We do feel happy, of course. When we see or when we hear beautiful music, when we see a stunning uh, scenery like we will see, you know, over here, the mountains and the rivers, does it not make us feel happy? Of course it makes us feel happy. So what is the difference between this and that? What is the difference between this happiness and the bliss that we get, let us say, after a deeply satisfying bhajan session? Right? So one Swami had asked this question, what is the difference between happiness and bliss? And the difference is this. This is what Swami explained. Swami said, a memory which at that moment gives you joy, that is happiness, having thought of it a little later, that actually gives you dissatisfaction, that is only happiness. For example, imagine you had a wonderful five course banquet 15 days back. Can you think of it today and gain the same amount of happiness? Imagine you went to a fantastic resort, let's say Switzerland in the Swiss Alps. Okay, you were kind of, you know, you were enjoying. Okay, let's say how many ever years back, last year or a couple of years ago. Today, when you think about that, does that give you the same amount of happiness that it gave you then? No, it does not. Right? It's, so, Swami was saying that that is happiness. In fact, today when I think about that, that moment, it gives me a dissatisfaction. Oh, so nice those, that moment was. So good it was. Oh, that food was so... I miss it today. Right? Whereas, that memory, thinking of which, even today, it gives you the same amount of joy, if not more, that is bliss. 
and you see our memories with swami are like that even today when we think about them and believe me for some of you you will think hey you know brother you are lucky because you had them what about me don't worry you have the right to pray for that kind of an experience in fact one swami was saying you don't have to pray for anything a devotee has no right to pray for anything but one what is that swami i want an experience with you okay ask pray for an experience and i shall give it to you you have the right a devotee has the right to pray that is why meera bai right what did she do darshan de jo aaj you better give me today give me that darshan today i want it right that is the kind of you know prayer and you know what he has to fulfill it he has to give it the reason why i am saying is for those of us who have had that experience that moment no right now open your hearts and go back to that memory and you will feel that charge automatically you don't need to come to retreats of course it's good i'm not saying don't <laughs> do come to retreats but use this moment you know to rekindle that connection with swami and that is not going to come from outside yes at best what the bhajans can do what nagar sankirtan and all of these activities can do is it can only give you that necessary energy for you to go within right the charging must happen from inside our hearts it is already there all we need to do is to reach out to that place so i love to do that i love to go back and i love to recall my first moment with swami and that is what i will do only for the purpose to give you that energy to go back into your own hearts and reach out to the swami in your heart so you know i was one of those fortunately unfortunate ones i'll tell you why why i say unfortunate is because i always you know i always complained to swami swami you did not have to do anything to get me you know all you needed to do was to impress my parents you know buy buy to get one free it was like that <laughs> like all he did all he needed to do was to get my parents and that's it my mother simply when i was born my mother said this is god okay fine this is god so i said swami you know what you like you missed an opportunity to do something for me <laughs> right god has lost an opportunity to get a devotee like put in some effort god you know <laughs> get do something to get me you can't you can't just get a free devotee like that right <laughs> right so this is how i look at myself i like cha you know there's no cancer cancelled in my life there is no vibhuti manifesting somewhere there's nothing you know like there's nothing like that which happened to my life to prove that right so i was born in a devotee family right when i was born my mother said this is god but i still remember that my mother would always tell me because what do we know whether he is god or not right who are we to certify somebody as god certificate can only be given by somebody who's above that person right your university can certify you to be a graduate a primary school child cannot certify you to be a graduate isn't it so when we certify him to be god just imagine what we are doing so you know we have taken upon we have taken upon the authority to certify him as god <laughs> how funny is that man certifies god to be god so i don't believe in that at all what we do usually right he should tick off some boxes ha uh, omniscience ha uh, tick omnipresence ha uh, tick omniscient hence proven he is god no i don't know i don't understand that concept right so my mother in fact it said forget god make him the hero of your life this is the only hero worth having in your life right so even as i look at my own nephews who were small and you know back then they would have spider man and superman and all the marvel heroes i had one marvelous hero which was swami and for me that was literally so in the sense uh, i don't know i must reveal to you a very controversial thing at this point i used to have my own secret darshan sessions in the afternoon you know you know what is that i would come out as swami and when everybody else would go to the bed in the afternoon i will step out of the interview room door i will look at all my imaginary devotees i will also do this okay and i will also hold i will hold the edge of my robe today if i were to do that highly controversial <laughs> you understand what i mean right so i used to give my own secret darshans i must reveal this okay i used to collect secret you know uh, imaginary letters from people 
ఓకే ఫ్రమ్ ఫార్ ఓన్లీ ఎల్సి చూస్తాను బంగారు కూర్చో కూర్చో ఐ యూస్ టు లిటరలీ ఇమిటేట్ బికాస్ ఫర్ మీ మోర్ దెన్ స్వామి బీయింగ్ గాడ్ రైట్ ఫర్ మీ హీ వాజ్ మై సూపర్ స్టార్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ అబౌట్ స్వామి వాజ్ సో బివిచింగ్ రైట్ ద వే హీ వాక్డ్ ఇట్ వాజ్ లైక్ అ లయన్ యూనో ఆఫన్ టైమ్స్ ఎస్పెషలీ ఇన్ బ్యాక్ ఇన్ దోస్ డేస్ వెన్ దేర్ వాజ్ ద సాండ్స్ ఆఫ్ ప్రశాంతి నిలయం రైట్ ఇట్స్ సో డిఫికల్ట్ టు వాక్ ఆన్ సాండ్ రైట్ ట్రై వాకింగ్ ఆన్ అ బీచ్ how difficult it is to walk on sand you know you will be like but when swami would walk it would be like a glide it was almost like swami was on roller blades right because he wouldn't walk he didn't have that gait he would simply glide over the sands all my uh, elder brothers over here will surely recollect those days and that itself used to be and those days if you notice bhagwan's uh, you know robe it would cover his feet and so you couldn't see his feet so you used to wonder what's happening below how can a person walk like this so i used to try and walk you know i used to try and walk without that gait like how do you do it you know just from you know that's the style of swami right and then when he would come out and he will just look at everybody and then do this ah kya baat hai <laughs> right you know uh, i used to we used to always wonder we used to ask our balvikas teachers i used to ask my mother what is the meaning of this you know and we had found several meanings so many people you know you see one act of god people are ready to put meanings to it like so many people had said this means that he is actually creating many universes <laughs> but there was one there was, there was one uh, meaning that kind of stuck with me okay and it's a hilarious one uh, whenever swami came out and he stood and looked at all his devotees and did this no one of the persons had told me you know in hindi it sounds really good uh, he said you know he would have said kaise kaise namune aate hain mere paas <laughs> that is that is i like i'll translate i'll translate you know what kind of what kind of specimens come to me <laughs> why did i even come down <laughs> what was i expecting <laughs> you know and typically after that swami would say something like you know i don't know whether you have seen in in videos he will kind of he'll give up little pout <laughs> right so he will sign off it's almost like you have written off so okay i'm not sure i'm not sure whom we are clapping for here for ourselves <laughs> oh yes we are the written off lot <laughs> kuch nahi ho sakta nothing can be done with us okay so think about what you're clapping for <laughs> right so that was one of the hilarious one like you know some you would come out and look at what did i think this fellow <laughs> so everything about swami used to be so beautiful so i used to you know look at him and there was one thing which was extremely dear to me back in our samiti in bahrain where my parents were we had an extremely strict samiti you know um no children were allowed to attend bhajans the weekly bhajans if you are a toddler you have to sit inside because you know while the bhajan is going on you will suddenly have alaps coming somebody will start shouting etc so extreme discipline so all the kids were asked to you know they were locked inside and said you do whatever you want don't disturb this okay so very strict except one child was allowed to attend bhajans and that was me because i loved bhajans so i would keep looking at what the tablist is doing what the harmonium player is doing how are the singers singing and so people would come and you know pat oh very disciplined boy very good very good so i you know even at that age i had like stars on my you know on my shoulders over here most disciplined kid right so with that stars on my on my shoulders i remember my first ever darshan probably 84 85 and um, so as always we go to prashanti and right and i'm sure for those of you who remember those days more than swa- more than we having swami's darshan a darshan was termed as good or bad if swami had our darshan correct means often times i'm sure you, you, you we will you know we used to have these uh, these conversation hey how was darshan how was darshan means what just imagine you know god is coming on earth we are seeing him and typically hey how was darshan ah darshan was okay re okay means from far means basically i saw swami but swami didn't see me <laughs> correct no a darshan would be really good if swami got the opportunity of me touching his feet i'm carefully using my words right 
if swami spoke to me and he heard my voice then it was a good darshan <laughs> correct so all of us wanted that good darshan but as long as we were there on that trip every single day you know our token number used to be 19 21 13 right all of us wanted that coveted token number 1 more than swami coming out for darshan token number 1 <laughs> who cares if god comes out for darshan or not token number 1 is for my first prayer in the morning <laughs> right if you offer all of you those of you who remember those days so all of us know and i i still it was such a it was such an adventure in those days to go and look at those lines okay and wonder which is that lucky fellow because the guy who sits in the first row he's the one who puts his hand so we look at you know and all the people sitting in the first row no they will be like this you know they will be at their peak devotion because everybody wants to pick up the token number 1 so we will look at there we will scan them and we will see who is that candidate who's most likely to pick up token number 1 and we will sit in his line anyway so the penultimate day we are sitting over there and you guess what right lo and behold the the sir sitting in our line picks up and you know typically that excitement you know he will be like shaking you know and all so everybody in that line is like yes we have done it so finally we get the token number 1 and so we run in and now by now we have already established our vantage points right we know that place where swami comes every day and we know those places where swami may or may not come right i'm sure as you run inside no you're like spoiled for choice when you run inside where do i go where do i sit okay so you go to the place where you know every day swami has come over there so now just imagine this is the moment of my life like this is the moment of reckoning for me right all of my life means however short or long it was by then <laughs> right it is all about that moment because i'm going to see my superstar right the person my hero is finally going to come and stand in front of me right so i'm going to have that moment with him and so i'm waiting for that i'm sitting i'm closing my eyes and i'm wondering how oh, when is that moment going to come and after some time i hear one sai ram so i open and it is one of our brothers wearing the blue scarf <laughs> right the sevadal brothers right they are i often call them angels of our spiritual progress <laughs> they are responsible for our spiritual progress they have been kept there so that we spiritually progress <laughs> right so they test you in every single way what swami cannot also put test for you no <laughs> that will be put by those i'm sure that from the smile that you all have all of you have experienced there <laughs> correct so uh, one of those and and you know the beauty of our sai fraternity is that we don't need any other language we just need sai ram sai ram conveys all emotions okay from hey sai ram oh sai ram you know a lot of exuberance sai ram sai ram sai ram right one word is enough to convey all emotions see how swami has given us a language by the way this was not the language of heart huh? <laughs> that swami was referring to anyway so i got one of those turner sai ram and you know i just gave him sai ram <laughs> and uh, he said so what used to i what i did not know is that children were not allowed to sit in first row okay because just imagine swami would come out for darshan and some random child will start running towards swami right because you know and and children are like that right you can't even catch them they're like so pieces they just you know slip out and so swami would so for so for swami a devotee you know uh, let me just take a slight detour here swami in, in one of the discourses in sai shruti you must have heard that uh, in sorry in brindavan trai brindavan he says boy ante behavior undali boy means he should have behavior man ante manners undali so swami is playing with that right those boy ante behavior that is boy if you want to call yourself a boy means you should have you should be well behaved man ante manners undali if you want to consider man you should consider uh, you should have manners then swami says devotee ante 
డివోషన్ ఉండాలి ఈజ్ వాట్ వీ విల్ థింక్ స్వామి సేజ్ నా డిసిప్లిన్ ఉండాలి ఫర్ డివోటీ హీ ఈజ్ యు నో హిస్ హాల్ మార్క్ ఈజ్ నాట్ ద డివోషన్ దట్ హీ హ్యాస్ బట్ ద డిసిప్లిన్ దట్ హీ హ్యాస్ ఓకే సో సో ఫర్ స్వామి డిసిప్లిన్ ఈజ్ అబ్సల్యూట్లీ నెంబర్ వన్ రైట్ సో ద చిల్డ్రన్ వేర్ మ్యాక్సిమమ్ అలౌడ్ ఇన్ ద ఫోర్త్ రో ఓకే సో దిస్ హీ వాజ్ జస్ట్ డూయింగ్ హిస్ డ్యూటీ ద సేవదల్ సార్ కమ్స్ అండ్ సేస్ సాయిరామ్ సాయిరామ్ సో ఐఎమ్ సింగ్ సాయిరామ్ మీన్స్ వేర్ so see at that moment no you suddenly get to know who is your relations and who is not so i wanted to tell my father was also there right so i wanted to tell my father please tell him i am not one of those kids i am not one of those mischievous kids i have got dis- did you see stars on my shoulder <laughs> the imaginary stars that i carried from bahrain samiti okay the certificate of discipline that's why i said no oh cha very very disciplined i thought that was a certificate i can use it in prashanti so obviously not and my father no he is now lost his in his own contemplation on swami <laughs> suddenly no kutah mata kutah pita is like that kutah putra who is this i don't know this <laughs> my father also disowned me because he is still looking you know he is looking forward for his darshan why will he spoil his darshan for my darshan <laughs> okay i mean these are all my uh, annotations and my uh, conditions okay i mean footnotes they are all footnotes so so because i was not ready to get up i was physically lifted <laughs> and there in those days you know arches used to be there at the back end of 1980s arches used to be there there used to be an arch right at the entrance of gents which is meant for all the most mischievous kids i was thrown in that arch so i was physically lifted and thrown into that arch and i couldn't take it okay here was the boy from bahrain <laughs> you know with all my stars okay and i'm being treated like a third rate citizen and so i start yelling just imagine a pin drop silence in 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 darshan grounds pin drop silence 6:30 in the morning and i start yelling over there i still remember i yelled this is not real swami this is not real swami because i'm saying if he was real swami he should know the devotion in my heart okay and for some strange reason the reason which i still don't know i said these are not real sevadals that also i was shouting so this is not real swami these are not real sevadals this is not real swami okay and lo and behold both me and my father were thrown out of the darshan ground <laughs> what you thought you thought swami came and suddenly no no <laughs> both me and my father miss you know who who is this whose kid is this sairam my father no ayyo <laughs> my kid only <laughs> so just imagine both me and my father were were asked to leave the darshan grounds and we were now standing in the first row outside the darshan ground <laughs> we wanted the first row inside the darshan ground <laughs> and as usual 645 swami came finished the darshans and he went back in <clears throat> and you know tears streaming down it's the our last darshan right tears streaming down my cheeks and my dad is like no please don't cry here also here from here also they will throw us out <laughs> in those days what used to happen like most of you may know we would typically after swami goes in for interviews everybody would go for, to have breakfast right we'll go back to their rooms they'll freshen up and they'll come back in time for bhajans so typically swami's uh, darshan will go on for about 20 to 25 minutes right so 715 he will go in and then probably come out by 845 850 and go for bhajans so everybody will come back in time for bhajans um that day my father said see anyway this is one of our last darshans let's give a breakfast okay and we'll just go inside and sit because we have not even at least till then no we were getting 19th number 13th number and all this was the darshan we were having from outside so at least let's go and sit inside okay and just feel that while all other devotees devotees have gone so we go inside after everybody is out we are in that day at around 8:15 itself the interviews are over there is nobody in the darshan grounds means very few people you know a smattering of people here and there about 50 60 100 maybe and swami comes out finishes finished the interview he is coming out of his interview room door 
and i say i see him standing there and from there he looks straight in my direction where you know where we uh, we were sitting and from there he starts walking straight <clears throat> ram rod straight swami is walking and comes and now just imagine at that point there is no token there is no lines there is nobody there is no sevadal it's just swami and me and exactly the darshan that i wanted to have my superstar right my mega star my hero is walking all the way up to me right and he comes up to me and there is nobody to push me back there is nobody to tell me hey go and sit over there swami is right in front of my eyes and he says hey kai ko chillata hai okay this was around 8:15 in the morning i did not know that sound travels so slowly <laughs> i had shouted at 6:30 in the morning you know lekin upar wale ke ghar mein der hai andher nahi right there was famous saying yeah, it's okay don't don't worry basically in the lords in the lords house there may be delays but never denials right swami walks up and he's saying hey kai ko chillata hai and for me i don't have an answer because i am just so mesmerized because this is exactly what i wanted i am looking at his large face and his large hair okay and then he pats on my back he says a good boy okay and then he says take pad namaskar and so i take namaskar and then swami turns back and he walks back that day my hero walked into my life every single time i have any problems in my life i simply relive this moment in each one of our lives swami has walked in like this you know once swami was talking to the brindavan boys swami said hey pillalu okay we hey boys listen either you allow me to enter into your heart or i will break and enter into your heart you have only two options either you allow me to enter into your heart or i will break through and enter into your heart but enter i will right so we have now a choice whether we want to open the hearts the doors of our heart to let our swami in you see the beauty of what when i contemplate on this incident no if i would have actually sat that day in the first row i probably wouldn't have had this story to tell or this experience to have because all i wanted was a nearby darshan but what i instead got was darshan sparshan and sambhashan that is i had a chance to see him i had a chance to touch him and i also chance had a chance to listen to him to talk to him so many times whatever we get in life no at that moment may not feel like swami this is not what i had asked for okay and swami says hang on i have something better to give you right it look like you are going away from swami before you come back to swami right it may look like hey i'm i'm taking the left turn when i'm actually supposed to take the right turn hang on don't worry right it this this road will bring you in a much scenic no, route back to me and that will be a far better journey for you so many times in our lives we may feel that we are going a little away don't worry just hang tight that's the other you know that, that's the other lesson i get see from first row to being thrown out and to being brought back in only to get a beautiful experience so on the only reason why i am sharing this experience is i'm sure each and every one of you have that experience in your life correct right now contemplate on that that is the way you will reach out. you see when you go back to that moment i can guarantee you that the energy that you will get from that experience is the same if not more today also it would have happened in the 1980s 70s 60s 50s whenever but it has the power to give you that energy that is how we can recharge ourselves i was reminded of uh, there was a uh, conversation once very recently about few years ago we had with padma kasturi ji she is the daughter of kasturi garu right one of the doyans one of the stalwarts of the sai fraternity and she was sharing something very 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 touching padma kasturi's life shrimati padma kasturi's life was an absolute challenge you name the kind of 
you know turbulence and problem that she would have had in her life and she had it right bad marriage difficult children her mother imagine mrs kasturi kasturi sir's wife was paralyzed for 11 years she was bedridden kasturi sir's wife i did not even know this right and until she told me this that kasturi himself imagine somebody who had dinner with and lunch with swami on a day to day basis and so she would always you know she you know she had lost it she was like appa go and tell swami my life is hell why is this happening to me in my life when swam, somebody like swami is there in my life right and you are so close to him and you travel around the world talking about swami did this and swami did that and swami appeared here your own wife is on is on the bed for 11 years one touch from him and you know this is the beauty this is the maturity of the devotion kasturi said i am not going to do that if you want you tell swami okay so but you go on you go and talk about swami all over the world right why can't you just tell him about he said does he not know even physically he knows right if he chooses not to do anything about him who am i to tell him kasturi ji not not someone you know not one of us <laughs> right even he felt hey you know what if swami does not want to do it it's it's, it's definitely good for me right so she was telling one day when she was not able to hold it enough she sitting in the darshan lines when swami comes and swami knew right swami would always enquire from kasturi garu how is your daughter how is padma is she doing okay because so many challenges in her life right so one day you know she said you know just imagine having the guts to tell swami she tells swami what is the use of having you in my life look at my life my life is a laughing stock everything possible wrong that can happen has happened to my life what have you done what have you done imagine the anguish that she could actually tell swami like that right she says what have you done for me and you see swami is answer and this is what i wanted to tell she told me this you know swami just comes up to her and pats her on on her you know just you know kind of casuals her and caresses her and says padma ask yourself this question what would your life be without satya sai baba okay think about what would your life be without satya sai baba and what is your life with satya sai baba to me this is one of the formulas that i use in my life and today i would like to share that with you is whenever you are in that moment no you want to charge yourself no just say so and so my life ame desh pande's life minus satya sai baba what would it be without god in our lives what would our life be and now that god has been added to our lives what is our life we are living no we are breathing no right and so she said that she held on to that one statement that swami made and it made all the difference from then on did it solve all the problems not at all it didn't solve any problem there were there were no great miracles in her life that happened after swami assured her of this na but you know what her entire life took a completely different perspective because the reason why i say this is all of us are we are you know we are so enamored by the miracles of bhagwan right we are so attracted towards the miracles of swami i still remember you know anil kumar sir explaining there is nothing great to have faith in bhagwan after your cancer is cancelled having faith in bhagwan while you are having cancer that is the greatest miracle correct or not right when i am able to be drawn to swami when i hold on to him come what may in my life is that not the greatest grace or is it a great grace to have everything hunky dory in my life and therefore he is god nothing great in that right so that is how we can recharge ourselves by thinking of what is our life without satya sai and what is our life with satya sai now let us move on to just uh, i'll just check the time i have time till 45 minutes yes so now let's move on to the next which is having recharged ourselves 
with with that you know with that first moment uh, let me just end that point with this uh, with this you know little thought that i have see even if it need not be a, an experience with swami okay it need not be many young adults over here many balvikas ssc students over here probably would have never seen swami it could it could simply be an experience of your first bhajan that you sang i remember the first bhajan that i sang ever in my life complete flop show it was an akhand bhajan i think in 1982 or 83 okay and two of us we were paired singing in akhand bhajan in that ssc slot namah parvati pataye har har absolute flop show you know why because har 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 mahadeva okay and then it goes to har 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 mahadeva har 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 and my brother had sung you know the one who was singing with had already gone to the next line while i was singing the previous line and then we looked at each other boss where are we and then the bhajan stopped so it was an absolute flop show but i still remember that first bhajan i still remember that namah parvati because it was a moment of my life and you know the reason why i say this is for each one of you over here i'm sure one of the greatest moments of your life when was when you uh, you know you were a wanna be singer you were a bathroom singer in bathroom sound everything sounds so good because the acoustics of bathrooms are so good <laughs> i wonder why they don't do recordings in bathrooms <laughs> right because in in the bathroom no ha, amazing i sound poof i mean this is no greater singer like you know twel taylor swift or beyonce like nothing in front of me so from the bathroom you finally come to the samiti right and then you try okay and finally you know the bhajan coordinator says yes brother or sister you know today is your first bhajan and all your life you have been waiting for that one chance correct and all you say to swami swami just once only i want to sing correct our first chance is that only one time i want to sing okay so we sing that first bhajan and after the bhajan gets over somebody comes and says wonderful brother so nice okay and the moment oh <laughs> i am wonderful so then you know next week you look expectantly at the bhajan coordinator okay and the bhajan coordinator out of great mercy says sing one more you know this week also you sing and so it begins okay week after week okay seven eight weeks and 10 12 weeks and after that one day the bhajan coordinator says today you will not sing ha huh? i will not sing brother it's me Yes or no I'm sure the way you guys are laughing you all agree with me <laughs> Right so it starts with that and then after having sung for 6 8 months after that no in the akhand bhajan I should be slotted in the first hour <laughs> Correct the the best singers are supposed to sing in the first hour of shivratri and akhand bhajans Correct Right so you and then you suddenly get it in the third hour or midnight 2 o'clock is your chance and you're like I I am the lead singer in my samiti and you give me a 2 am chance right and so it you know this is how our bhajan it has happened to me also right all just imagine go back to that day when you wanted just one chance all we wanted is that one chance to sing in front of swami you see how it starts right let us be aware of that okay so it could be just that one bhajan that you have sung which has deeply connected you go back to that that is a source of immense energy in our lives having recharged now let's come to the next which is to reflect right unless there is a beautiful term in vedanta which is called simhavalokana okay what does it mean it seems you know when the lion walks every now and then and you would have seen this in documentaries the lion no stops and looks back okay it's called simhavalokana you know what it means it means that the lion every now and then he's the king of the jungle right he looks back to see the path that he has traversed who is there behind me who is not who is leading me no one in each of our spiritual lives no every now and then we stop and we should look back look at our own spiritual journeys that is reflection nobody is going to help you do that 
we have to do it ourselves. In fact, Swami was once telling you know, a, a bunch of foreign devotees, I'm sure you must have heard this before, Swami said, I can change heaven into earth and I can change earth into heaven, but I cannot change your mind towards God. The Lord of the universe saying, I can change heaven into earth and earth into heaven, but I cannot change your mind toward God. You have to do it yourself. Swami can give us the experiences. Swami can do everything possible, but until we decide that Swami, yes, and now it's you and not the world. I want you and you alone. That is a choice that we have to take. That is the reflection. You see, it's not that we don't love God. We love God a lot. Our problem, you know, is what? We love the world a little more. The only difference, believe me, the only thing that we need to change in our lives is this. It's not that we don't love God enough. I love the Lord a lot. So it's in the balance where you have world on one side and God on one side. God is very, very heavy. Okay, let's say 10,000 kgs of love for God. But 10,001 kg for the world. And so what happens? How much ever love you have for this side... If you don't reduce your love here, no, the balance is going to tilt this way only. Okay? So it is all about the change that we have to create. That, that is the reflection. Is it God for the world or is it world for God? You see, what we do? Most of us, not, not this crowd, but the world out there, what does it do? I use God to get something in the world. Correct? The Lord, the mandirs, the churches, the gurudwaras and all the mosques are nothing but ATM machines. We go and we swipe our card. Hey Lord, give me this. Which means I'm using God also as a currency. And that's why the super rich and the super powerful don't, need the, don't feel the need for God. Why? Without that only I'm able to get everything. No, why do I need God? Think about it. This is what typically happens. What is happening here? We are using God to get something in the world. What we need to do is to simply flip it around. We need to use the world to get to God. Right? God is our destination, not the world. Right? God is our destination and now we have to use this world to get to God. That's the only, that this is the crux of all of spiritual sadhana. This is the crux of all of Bhagavad Gita. The Lord is simply saying, Maam Anusmara Yuddhacha. Lord Krishna and Bhagavad Gita is saying, think of me and fight the battle. Don't have to only think of me, don't have to only fight the battle, just think of me and fight the battle. Right? That is the crux, that is the divine formula. Do we do that much reflection? Do we do that much smarana? Right? Um, how does Swami, you know, uh, define... This, this thought process, this, uh, this marana. Let me take you back to 2005. Some of us had, had the opportunity to travel with Swami to Kodaikanal. And you know, Kodaikanal is a very different uh, Swami that you will see because you will see Swami at the back. In the sense, you will see the behind the scenes of Bhagwan. Oftentimes in Prashanti, Vrindavan and all, you will see Swami coming out for darshan. In Kodaikanal, you will see Swami going out for darshan. Right? So you will see what happens before darshan, what happens after darshan. Right? So our first darshan will be in the morning at around 6 o'clock. You know, fresh like a fresh lily. Okay? Immediately after bath, Swami will open his bedroom door. Okay? And you will see Swami just having had bath. That will be your first darshan. And then Swami will ask. And the, there will be just one wall, you know, in between. So on one side there are students sleeping, on the other side is Swami's bedroom. Okay, and then Swami will say, you know, Nina Ratri Nin Bhaga Padkuledu. Swami said, I didn't sleep properly. Somebody was snoring outside. <laughs> so there were strict strict instructions. Hey, all snorers go to ground floor. Because Swami used to stay on the first floor. Okay. So I didn't know whether I snore. Who which snorer knows whether you're snoring or not? <laughs> so I just took the easier way out. I said, I'll go to ground floor. <laughs> Right? So it's like that. It's that kind of Swami that you will kind of see over there. It's absolutely like intoxicating proximity. You cannot go away from Swami. You know, the, the farthest you will be sitting will be about five feet away, you know, from Swami. Like that it is. So you'll have breakfast and lunch and snacks and dinner with Swami. So uh, on one of the days, 
we were about to get ready to go for the evening bhajans which happens in the sai shruti bhajan hall and you know the the beauty of that swami is the amount of expectancy that devotees have for swami swami also has that much expectancy to go and see his devotees you know what he would do before darshan no he will open the curtain and see all devotees and then he'll say chudu yanta mandi vacharu see how many of them have come just imagine ha, for lord of the universe he is looking expectantly at all his de devotees who have come okay and then he'll say see cha paapam chaala chudani enta challaga undi see how cold it is and they have braved all that cold to have darshan okay and then he'll say and no you look at you fellows <laughs> you know that will be the typical thing <laughs> like we we also want to take swami at one point of time we were also there swami <laughs> means because of our great good you know prarabdha karma we have come here <laughs> any <laughs> for those of you who get it get it <laughs> right so um, uh you know we would see this part of swami and so one day just before bhajans were about to start swami asks chudu whether the bhajan hall is full or not no see whether you know devotees have assembled and so our vishnuvasan sir he went over there and he said swami andaru vachar swami it's full jam packed swami andaru mee kosam we are waiting for you ha ah. velandi velandi pillalu oh, oh come on legandi legandi he'll say get up get up get up go 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 for bhajans start bhajans i am coming no that's the signal and then swami says chudu enta bhakti undi see how the devotees how much devotion they have okay so this is one of those moments and so we you know by then we know how much swami loves devotees so we were just nodding and then swami says suddenly no swami had gotten up suddenly swami turns back and turns around and says but in sin telugu he says kaani naaku nee devotion vaddu i don't want your devotion okay now when he said that no the first thought i said whoa whoa hang on what are you saying if god doesn't want devotion then what does god want swami is telling i don't want your devotion okay and then a few seconds later swami says i want transformation i don't want your devotion okay now just think about this statement devotion versus transformation so in fact swami went on to say you know why i don't want your devotion endukante because devotion vastundi potundi swami said devotion comes and goes you know how think about it it'll come on a sunday evening or it'll come on a thursday evening okay a beautiful bhajan is sung like just like our brothers and sisters so beautifully they sang the om starts and a beautiful bhajan comes and <gasps> swami <laughs> and tears starts to flow down your eyes you know and it creates all the right kind of spiritual vibes ओके एंड देन द भजन गेट्स ओवर ओम शांति शांति जय बोलो भगवान श्री जय आ गो बैक एंड माय लाइफ इज बैक टू नॉर्मल या आई क्राइड गुड इनफ देयर इज नो इंपैक्ट ऑफ भजन्स व्हाई बिकॉज़ द डिवोशन केम एंड इट लेफ्ट एज सून एज इट केम विद द सेम स्पीड इट इज गॉन यू थिंक देयर इज एनी डर्थ ऑफ डिवोशन इन दिस वर्ल्ड गो टू एनी टेंपल इन दिस कंट्री this country especially in india right temples are filled with people you go to tirupati you go to shirdi you go to kedarnath you go to vaishno devi you go to any place you come to prashanti nilayam full of devotees okay so there is no dearth of devotion in this country in this world swami is saying i don't want that i am not interested in that what i want is something that when it comes it never goes and that is transformation so ami said transformation once you cannot untransform once you transform once a larvae becomes a butterfly once a stone becomes a idol once a seed becomes a tree it cannot become another seed again it remains forever the transformation is permanent i want that that is what we need to reflect upon in our own spiritual journeys is my devotion coming and going or is my devotion coming and growing that growth of devotion is transformation right um let me give you two of my own 
how this reflection has kind of how swami has forced this re reflection so back in uh, you know you all must be knowing about grama seva about the village seva that uh, swami would make us do as students it started in the year 2000 uh, have you heard of the grama seva like you know during the navratri time all the students would go into the villages it's nowhere close to the kind of grama seva that is done elsewhere in india the grama seva done elsewhere is absolutely you know comprehensive it is very deep and it's very long in the sense the the association with the village stays for almost 5 to 6 years until the entire transformation happens our our grama seva was more like a trailer grama seva like trailer seva <laughs> you know swami would just give us a snapshot of what it means to go and serve in a village anyway now what used to happen is i was there from almost the first year of grama seva i think it started in 2000 i joined in 2003 so it was almost like you know the beginning and those days the enthusiasm swami would have for grama seva right he would be waiting for all students to come back etc etc now what would happen is um we went to the grama seva the first year was good and eventually after fin i finished my mba i joined for mphil and then for phd and you know as you become more and more senior you become like you know group head first you become tractor head then you become truck head so we have all of these you know trucks going in right so you will become like head of you you will be the coordinator now so you reach a point where you become like a group head because every year we go to the same set of villages okay so we serve in the same villages so that at least somebody is aware of the village you know and who all stay in that village now what typically happens is swami had told us whatever number they mention give that many prasadam right so if some house they say eight people you give them eight prasadam no questions asked now what used to happen is the villagers got to know of this okay so you go there's a tiny little house of 5 feet by 5 feet there's a lady standing outside so you go sairam amma swami pampincharu that is sairam amma swami has sent us yanta mandi unnaru this is the standard how many people are there she will say 15 you know that 15 people can't even stand in that place <laughs> so you know obviously she is lying okay now just imagine we have gone with a plan in our so typically on a single day during grama seva 40000 packets of food are distributed imagine if you even if you have an error of 1% what that will mean even a 1% error right over 10 days so in in 10 days 400000 packets are distributed a 1% error is 4000 packets right it will mean that 4000 people either have not got or 4000 people's food has gone waste because you know it will be only the 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 rice lasts only 24 hours so we had to go it, it's a, it's a beautiful management exercise also you know estimate your demand and go in exactly with that kind of demand for that day so we had to tell amma we'll tell amma appadam chepadam okay these are all words that i had learned this is how i learned telugu actually okay through grama seva only we will be we'll amma don't tell lies correctly tell you know and those villagers know they will like ha huh? liar me you know they'll be like that they are all very very you know clean at their heart but if you tell them something like that no i am telling lie you are standing in front of my house in my village and you are telling me you know it's like that so you know you know that now what used to happen is because i was a group head no just imagine my condition if i don't give a sari or a dhoti to someone no they will take away my shirt and pant <laughs> we have experienced that okay all the brothers have experienced that it used to be literally okay brothers on your mark get set go you know get into the truck and run away from the village okay because all aunties will start you know running behind you and she'll say hey you missed me etc right it, it used to be fun now a uh, fun now today to look back at that time very traumatizing <laughs> okay so you know you're standing over there and they are uh, you know they are they are uh, expecting and you have to be you know you have to be absolutely ruthless at some point of time and tell them that hey this is not going to work now what used to happen is at the end of the day of a grama seva no i used to be absolutely like dissatisfied distraught discontent with the work that we have done 
So in the evening when we would come to mandir, you know, and Swami will say, oh, and there used to be these Gram Seva presentations, you know, in those days. Rangarajan sir, Deepak Anand and I used to make, and they, they used to talk so highly about the Gram Seva. And I used to say, what, what is this? You have no idea what's happening in the real Gram Seva. Come with me, I'll show you. Every day, all I'm doing is arguing and fighting and shouting and scolding, getting scolded at. At the end of the day, the villagers are not happy, I am not happy. So I used to say, Swami, what kind of a Gram Seva are you getting it done from us? I'm not able to understand. Right? Nobody's happy at the end of it. They are not happy, I am not happy. Okay, and so, you know, it, it is really frustrating that we plan so much and then you go and then you have, you know, fought with people and come back. So one of the years I decided to bunk Gram Seva. Okay, I simply said, I'm not going for Gram Seva. So I gave some excuse, you know, some convocation drama was coming up. Uh, the, one of the dramas and so I said sir very busy in me doing drama so I'm not coming this year so that year blissful okay no need to go into the village and fight with everybody next year be even before the Gram Seva started you know our section our entire head said hey Ameya last time only you missed her huh? I'm telling you this time no no excuses you better go I was like oh again I have to go and fight you know and so there used to be something called stock vehicle. Brother Uday Girish used to be in a stock vehicle. A stock vehicle is, you know what? Um, all the vehicles will go into the, gram, in, into the villages. There will be two vehicles which will stand on the outskirts of the village, which will have all the extra food. So whichever team needs food, right? They, they, they just have to come up to that, that midpoint, take some more and then go back into. So that was, so that the stock vehicle's job was only to replenish the existing or you know the, the teams which have already gone. So we won't interact, that stock vehicle guys won't interact with any villagers. Okay? I said this is an amazing place. Means I will serve, I will serve my own students. I don't have to serve the villagers. I don't have to go into the village. And at the same time I can satisfy myself by saying I'm doing lot of seva. Okay, I'm doing Ram Seva. So I got into the stock vehicle for that one year. Now, one of the things about the stock vehicle is, though the stock vehicle will not go inside the village, it will be the last to come back to Prashanti because after all people have finished serving, all the extra food will be put back into the stock vehicle and now we have to finish the food before it comes back to Prashanti. So we will start distributing all across the road back to Prashanti. So people who are working in the fields, they will come onto the main road, they will take. So, you know, that is cool because you just keep distributing from the truck. So we have finished one day, finished the distribution, coming back near the railway station, you know, in Prashanti, Mamila Kunta Cross, it's called. So over there, the, we have stopped and we are serving and one beggar-like person comes and starts to pull at my pant, okay? And, you know, see, at that moment, again, it is like, ah, Sairam, 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 hey, I already got, hey, Sairam, you know, we, this is how we are distributing. Like it's like, you know, constantly, hundreds of people have gathered and we're just giving them food. And this guy is pulling my pant. And, you know, I'm telling him, no dhoti, dhoti le do. There's no dhoti. Okay, you're not going to get dhoti if you want, take food. And this man is telling, I don't want dhoti. Okay, he's saying, na to okasari matla dal. I want to talk to you. You want to talk to me. Eh? What is it that you have to tell me? Okay, and so I was like, hey, you know, I'll, I'll speak to you later. And this guy, you know, just few minutes. So I told the other brothers, okay, you continue, looks like this person wants something. So I got down from the vehicle. And this man, absolutely torn clothes, rugged, right? He's, a, he's like a beggar. He starts to tell me in Telugu, he says, Sir, I am a beggar. My entire life, I have to stretch my hand out and beg for my food. Okay, I am not proud of it. I put my head down while I beg. But these 10 days during Navaratri, no? Swami sends food for me. I don't have to beg. Okay, I can put my head up high and I can say that, Na Swami na kosam pampincharu. You know, Swami has sent for me. Okay, thank you for making me feel self-respected for these 10 days at least. I just wanted to pay my gratitude to Swami through you. <laughs> yeah.
even, even now, when I think of this, it makes me emotional. He didn't want anything. He just wanted to convey to Swami that, Swami, I love you. That day, my life changed. I was thinking, I was the person going into villages and distributing. You know what? Absolutely wrong. Swami was giving his prasadam to his children. I was just an intermediary who was supposed to take his prasadam and give it. Swami wanted me to learn that that day. Swami wanted to tell me that, hey, you know what? You are nothing. I am the one who is conveying my love to that person. Right? It made me, and that day I went and I cried like crazy in Mandir because you know, a new understanding had dawned. Okay? And I simply decided, hey, you know what? No more stock vehicle. I am going to go into the villages. And Swami had that year had told that when you are distributing prasadam, no? Just say, Om Satchidananda Yanamaha. This is the instruction he had given. That when you serve, Om Satchidananda Yanamaha serve. So I simply said, Swami, whoever stands over here, no, I am going to see you in that person. Even if that person fights with me, I will not fight back. Let's see. Dear brothers and sisters, I can tell you, since that day, for the next six years, I never fought with anybody. Guess what? Nobody ever fought with me. You see, because yatha drishti, tatha srishti. As is your vision, so is the creation. We think that the world is fighting with us. Nah, we are having a problem with the world. Okay? The moment we are able to transform that little, that perspective of ours, no? The entire world sudden, suddenly, you know what? Every single day after that, I used to go to the village. I used to say, Saira Mama, to those same ladies, okay, who used to shout back at me. You know what? They would also give me the most beautiful, Sai Ram Pa, Vacha, you've come. You know what? I never fought again. I never fought again with anybody in my life, in the sense in the village. <laughs> <laughs> right? It was one of the most, like, nothing. Swami didn't have to do anything. He just wanted to show that, hey, you know what? You are thinking you are doing seva. You think you are saving my prasadam <laughs> by not giving as many? Don't worry. Right? The other incident that I want to tell you is, so this is one reflective moment for me, right? I'm sure in each one of your lives, just be alive to what Swami is telling us. And I think that is one very important thing whenever we do seva, is that we must have reflective sessions on seva. There must be a debrief after the seva, because it is not more than the seva that you do, what is important is what the seva does to you. Who cares whether Satya Sai Seva Organization, dear brothers and sisters, I'll humbly say from this platform, Satya Sai Seva Organization doesn't have the responsibility to remove global poverty, global hunger. <laughs> we have, Swami did not set up our organization to remove hunger, to remove poverty or to remove disease from earth. That is his job. Okay, why he set up this? In fact, in 1967 and 68, the first two discourses of Bhagwan that he gave at the first World Conference and the first All India Conference, Swami says, there are so many organizations which, were, which are doing exactly what we are trying to do. Why do we need this organization then? This organization is only for one thing, to see me as Sarvantar Yami in everyone. The only purpose for which I am asking you to do, whatever I am asking you to do, the only purpose is to see me in everybody. And we will come to that, that understanding of what is that seeing you in everyone. Because the theme for this is all are one. What is that oneness? We will come to that in tomorrow's talk. This is my little uh, advertisement for tomorrow. <laughs> no, but you are, you are all so generous, no? You will, I'm sure however good or bad it is, you'll still be there tomorrow. You know why? Because of your love for him. <laughs> right. My second reflective moment. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. My second reflective moment. Um, when we were in our second year during MBA, so the second year postgraduate students are like the creme de la creme in the institute. 
right it's like having gone through all the years you finally reach you know second year post graduation and it also gives you a lot of importance finally your man final year pillalu final year boys okay we are like creme de la creme so everything is you know like we have a passport we have a visa for everything like we can get away with anything so those are the times when swami will ask you to sing you know so as a singer you you'll be sitting and swami will say hmm, no padu so slowly no you know you get your collars go high and you think man sai bhajans cannot happen without me kulvan thal cannot run without me swami himself is asking me to sing right so that moment comes and so it came <laughs> right lots of chances lots of interactions you know and so swami wanted to now have a moment of reflection so one day uh in those days swami would sit for typically only seven or eight bhajans maximum eight bhajans so one day mine was the seventh bhajan chance okay and after the sixth bhajan swami took aarati normal next day i was slotted at sixth and after fifth bhajan swami took aarati <laughs> the following day i was slotted at fifth and after fourth bhajan swami took aarati now whenever such a thing happens in fact every day we have one of our very senior Uh, sirs sailesh rivastav dr sailesh sir we all know him right the one who has composed humko tumse pyar kitna and most of the qawalis that we all sing all composed by him so you know we we always believe he is like our uh, you know music coordinator there and we always believe that he has really strong antennas okay like his antennas are high quality they will be t- you know they will see all they will see through all the signals that bhagwan is sending you know who, what is swami doing because see you see what swami will do no he will not tell i don't want you to sing he will create these kind of circumstances to ensure that you will not sing <laughs> do you know there are times when students will go and tell swami i want to sing swami say chaala manchi thi and then swami will call sailesh sir a hey, don't give him chance <laughs> it happens that's why no reason i'm telling you this is if you don't get chance in bhajan to sing no that is what is happening <laughs> take it as bhagwan's prasadam okay just imagine now now what really happens is no sailesh sir we feel is like the biggest shock absorber because several times it will happen that swami would have told ah chaala manchi thi bangaru nu paadu means very good bangaru you sing okay then he would have given this instruction and you will be wondering why i am not getting chance to sing so you will go to sir and say sir sir swami blessed me to sing very good very good yeah sai ram brother he cannot tell swami told me brother you are not going to sing okay so you will be waiting weeks after weeks sir what is what is wrong sir swami told me to sing <laughs> very good that's all so he is you know he he has all of this so i knew okay uh, the day after the fifth after the fourth bhajan the swami got up right i knew I looked at Sailesh sir. Sailesh sir looked at me. Okay, and I knew that's it. Better run, because you know you'll get a half an hour gyan. You'll get a lecture session. Because I knew something. Every day for three consecutive days, exactly before my bhajan, Swami is getting up. So next day, I am slotted at one. Ganesh bhajan. Okay. So as I'm sitting over there, I'm singing. Today, where you will run, Swami? Three days, you have not heard my sweet voice. <laughs> Today I am Ganesh. I have to sing, right? But you see, this is when Brother Balu was telling, no, Putta Parthi Chakra Varthi. Okay, he is the Chakra Varthi of Putta. He is the master of the universe. That day, so in those days, what used to happen? No, some days bhajans used to be outside. That is where they are now. And some days they used to be in bhajan hall. This was 2004. You know, when Vedam chanting had just started. and uh, swami would sometimes sit outside sometimes he'll go into bhajan hall so uh, we all would be seated outside and in case swami goes inside bhajan hall then we will all run inside bhajan hall so that day swami seated outside and vedam chanting is going on and as vedam chanting is you know happening swami calls speakers to come and speak <laughs> you know randomly he will call ha ever matladta ra ever will anybody speak and you know the, the, these used to be just impromptu speeches what would typically happen is just like me who's praying to sing there are others who are also praying to speak right they have prepared speeches 
so many of our classmates were there in that right we would we would always have a speech ready because you never know when swami will give you an opportunity so swami will simply call the warden and swami will say is there anybody to speak right um so you should be ready so we will all have one one speech ready so uh, that day so suddenly swami calls speakers and one by one one speaker two speaker three speaker six speaker spoke that day so i am looking at the clock okay it's one hour 15 minutes over six speakers i'm thinking my god i never thought this can also happen <laughs> then but but you know the monkey mind how it is the monkey mind is also thinking why am i thinking it's my problem maybe it's their devotion their prayer swami is listening to correct no why am i taking the whole thing on to myself okay and basically to show me that it's exactly meant for you only you know what swami does after six speaker speaks finish speaking swami looks at primary school children and swami says ah today you sing bhajans <laughs> in the history of prashant indilayam that has never happened okay primary school children just imagine 7th class 8th class uh, 6th class children they have come and you know how children's bhajans are i mean we due respect to children all the youngsters over here raja vilola nanda la la no right bhajans are like that because full josh and just imagine it is a golden moment for them <laughs> okay and half an hour swami is sitting and enjoying bhajans okay all the kids are like singing you know full throated full hearted okay needless to say after the bhajans swami took aarati after that sailesh sir comes to me and says brother <laughs> means you take off no it's very it's very nice for you to laugh now but it's an absolute devastation to hear you know being told don't sing <laughs> and you know why not because you're not singing correctly because swami does not want to hear you correct no brother don't sing you take off there is some problem why between you and swami okay and so from that day onwards i stopped singing for 40 days every day i would go for bhajan and sit at the back and believe me dear brothers and sisters those were some of the best days of my life today when i look at them at that time they were excruciating okay to know that swami does not want to listen just imagine the whole purpose of your life is to sing in front of swami right the same swami does not want to listen to you now what do you do that's why when i started no the god who you are supposed to pray when he only screws you <laughs> where do you go right so what used to happen is after every day after bhajans i would run back to hostel i would go to music room we have a music room in the hostel and i would sing over there right it is to the same swami but right who else will you sing to those were some of the today when i look back those were the most reflective moments of my life why am i singing bhajans who do i think i am right and so after 40 days right sale sir looks at me and says we'll try today let's try meaning let's see what's you know whether your equation with swami is okay or not so i was going to sing the third bhajan slotted at number 3 and that day swami calls four speakers to speak in between no other speaker days okay that day after vedam chanting four speakers are called i still remember while the speakers were being called no some of them don't even want to speak <laughs> one of the brothers i won't reveal his name swami says hmm come <laughs> <laughs> you know when we were not prepared for a speech you know you should see how we all used to we used to just hide behind others <laughs> correct <laughs> correct valu brother right we would just hide behind we'll just look like that not me not me <laughs> okay because he will just randomly call hey noora matladu just imagine in front of kulwant hall you are supposed to speak okay means you cannot be speaking some mambo jumbo there right it has to be a very and that too swami will say he will be introduced that speaker will be introduced as some double post graduate and all that you know means so you are supposed to hit it at that level your speech should be of that level because vice chancellors will be sitting and you know what 
Swami is not the fear factor there. It's all these others. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, because after they'll say, you know, we'll get an interview from Vice Chancellor after that, <laughs> if the speech was not good. So, uh, so everybody's like, so this brother, I still remember, it's hilarious, you know. He's, Swami's telling, come. <laughs> I don't know, I don't want. So, Swami calls him, Yedo kancham See, say, say something. Say something small. So, Swami, I don't know, Swami. Eh. Just go and speak. So, this brother, just imagine in Kulvanthal, no, I still remember one of the shortest speeches. Okay, in the, in the history of Kulvanthal, you know what was, he was a Vedam boy. He continues to be a Vedam boy now. He came, stood over there. Om Purnamadha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate This is full, that is full, this full has come from that full, even though this full has come from that full, this remains full, that remains full. Jai Sai Ram! This was his whole speech, huh? This was his whole speech. And especially these Vedam boys and Bhajan boys, we have a very good kind of segue. You know, we have Bhajans. If you, do, if you don't know anything, just start with a Bhajan. As the Bhajan is going on, you'll think what to, what to say. <laughs> so this brother simply said, Purnamadha Purnamidam, this is full, that is full. This full has come from that full. Even though this full has come from that full, this remains full, that remains full. Okay? So, so uh, now in my mind, no, I was thinking, Swami, why are you calling people who don't want to speak? I am sitting here who wants to sing. <laughs> right? And after the four speeches were over, okay, Swami looks at the bhajan group and says, ah, rendu bhajan. Let's have two bhajans. <laughs> and at that moment, I said, what is your problem? Why can't we have three bhajans? You know very well that I am at number three. <laughs> right? And so the bhajan started anyway. And now just imagine, heart is beating really fast because if that day I do not sing, right, I will never sing again. That's, that'll, that'll be the end of the bhajan career. Right? And so high bandwidth, I'm broadcasting prayers. Okay? <laughs> Full. 5G, 8G, Swami G. <laughs> <laughs> Swami, 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 sorry, Swami, sorry, Swami. Okay, and I'm saying, Swami, I am nothing. I'm zero, Swami. Right? And I'm simply praying like that. I say, Swami, I just, like, I know everything is in your hands. Right? Just help me to accept whatever comes. Okay, and as the second bhajan gets over in those days, you know, that brass rails used to be there. And Swami would stretch his hand out to kind of get up you know, with that support. And that would be the signal for Pujari sir to light the lamp, you know. And so, sec two bhajans get over and Swami's hand stretches out and Pujari lights the arati and my heart sinks, okay, because arati is now going to start. And even as Swami is getting up, Swami looks at the bhajan group and says, Inko Kati, let's have one more bhajan. <laughs> and I still remember, I sang the bhajan as Swami stood through the entire bhajan. This was, believe me, the time when Swami had a fracture in his hip. Right? And after that, the arati happened. But the reason I'm saying this is, to teach us a lesson, he will go to any extent. I will stand up with a broken hip to tell you that if you think that you are, you know, if you get ego, while singing my name, it's useless. That was a great, one of the great reflective moments of my life. That if we think, we sitting over here, we have been gifted that talent of singing, there's only one purpose for that talent and that is to be offered back to Swami the way He has given it to us. Okay? While we do any activity in the organization or even in our lives, let's keep this in mind that everything that we are doing is an offering to Swami. When we are able to do this, we come to the last, and I will end with this, I promise. And that is, we reach, we resolve, we have to take that resolve, the third R. What kind of a life as we as Sai devotees are going to make of ourselves? I will only end, though I had a few things to say, I will only end with this 
you know, this formula. The three A's, in the three R's I'm going to add for resolve, you can simply do that. You know, how, you, how can we take those little resolutions? All we need to do, most of us have already done step A. But I will simply say that the three steps are add Swami in our lives, allow Swami to take our lives, and achieve Swami. So add Swami, allow Swami, achieve Swami. If for many of us who may, who may think that, brother, you had those experiences, we never had that time. How do I connect with God? I have nothing to hold on to. I have nothing. I don't have any family background. I don't have any background to help me gain that love with Swami. No? All you need to do is add a little bit of Swami. You see, we say so many things, my, 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 right? We say my family, my country, my community, my job, my self-respect. In this long list of my, 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 no? just add my Swami. All you need to do is to simply add my Swami in the long list of my's. You know, God has this ability, slowly like the top 10 billboard or top 50 billboards, no? he starts to go up. May he, you may enter him at top, you know, in the 50th list as my Swami, he will slowly make his way up. And he will become, that my Swami will become number one. Then it will become my Swami and everything else. There is a beautiful concept called Bhikshu Pada Prasarana Nyaya. In Vedanta, there is something called Bhikshu Pada Prasarana Nyaya. It's a very beautiful concept. You know, in, back in those days, uh, there would be, you know, these people who would keep traveling, they will be like vagabonds. They will like, you know, from village to village. So imagine they come over there, they are standing at the doorstep and they will say, Bhiksham Dehi, you know, please give me something, right? Give me some food. So you as a good person, Samaritan, you go there and you give him something, then he says, Sir, it's a little hot, sir. Can I just enter into your house? You know, I will sit in one corner. And you as a good person, you will say, oh, yes, please, please come and sit in the corner. Then, you know, that person has a jholi. So he will put down his jholi. You know, out of his jholi will come one statue of Krishna or whichever, the Lord statue. And he says, Sir, um, just like you gave me little space here, sir, for keeping my Lord, can you give me that corner of the house? So, ah, yes, please, please, oh yeah, please. So he puts one statue over there. Then he will say, sir, for doing little puja, sir, can I take flowers from your garden? So then that person goes and starts plucking flowers from your garden for the puja. Then he says, sir, for naivedyam for the Lord, sir, can I come into your kitchen? You see what's happening? Slowly, this little person whom you gave only a little corner of your house, slowly starts to take over your entire house. And slowly, your life becomes all about looking after him now and his, his God. This is called Bhikshu Pada Prasarana Nyaya. They say, Bhakti in our lives, devotion for God in our lives is like that. It enters and it just takes a little corner. My God. But slowly but surely, you know, this my God starts to spread all over your life and it consumes your entire life. Your life becomes one for God. All you need to do but for that is to add God into your life. Can we take the resolution that we will add a little bit of Swami into my life? Into whatever I do, I will add Swami. Number one. Number two, for those of you who have already done that, right? allow Swami now to take over. Right? Let Swami, Swami would say, don't make me a part of your life. Make me the center of your life. Right? Swami is not some phenomenon who will just come on a Thursday or on a Sunday in my life. That's being making Swami a part of my life. Make Swami the center of my life. Everything in my life revolves around Swami. All my problems, I will tell Swami. All my joys, I will tell Swami. All my successes and failures, I will share it with Swami. Allow Swami and eventually we achieve Swami. I have completely run out of time. Maybe I will share this experience of how we can achieve Swami at some other point of time. So just to wrap up, these retreats, the whole idea of having a retreat, in my opinion, is these three R's. What are the three R's? Recharge. Reflect. Resolve. By Monday morning, if we would have been able to do recharge, I'm sure is what is going to happen after the session. Correct? Which is that? Gita Aunty Sessions. <laughs> right? It's going to be tremendously recharging. We're all looking forward to that. Right? Eventually, through the day and through the evening and through the night and tomorrow, let's reflect. Through the workshops, 
we will reflect. And hopefully on Monday morning, as we leave this retreat, we will resolve. We will resolve that my life will never be the same again. There's a very beautiful prayer and I'll end with this. It is said, Swami, I am sorry for I am not what I ought to be. But thank you, Swami, for I am not what I used to be. It's one step ahead every day. Swami, I'm sorry for I am not what I ought to be. There's a long way to go. But thank you, Swami, for I am not what I used to be. Yes, I have come some distance. It's that resolve to go steadily ahead and ahead and finally achieve Swami. Thank you so much. Jai Sai Ram. Thank you, Brother Ammai, for transporting us to Purthi, or should I say, bringing Swami here to all of us today. You reminded us of the three R, and we are proudly calling ourselves the Region 3, so R3, so we are on team here. And one thing I may you did for sure along with the three R's uh, for me is also to add the fourth R to relive so many beautiful moments with Swami. And